Hello everyone, today I would like to share this fix process. I like to fix this uh, HMI panel touching problem. This is a Siemens KTP 400 monocolor HMI. This is the touch screen, however, now it's not working properly. This button is still working. For example, I can use this button, switch or toggle the signal or switch the screen. And this HMI can still communicate with the latest S7-1200 or the Siemens PLC. The communication is still working properly, just the, the touch screen. If it doesn't have a touch function, actually it's lose 90% function. So sometimes I will use this small HMI for testing purpose. For example, I will put uh, some buttons, but without the touching function, it's losing 90% functionalities. To fix this problem, we need to order online. So if you search Siemens touch screen, you would search a kit. That kit includes two parts. One is this firm. This firm has a button on that. And one is a key function, that touching panel function. Basically like this screen, actually the problem come from this screen is failed. So I need to replace this screen. We need to tear down this HMI and replace this screen. Or if your HMI also has a button problem, so we can replace this firm, also replace this uh, glass screen. Most of the cases, uh, we will have the problem on the touching function. This is a normal worn out problem. Basically, we will replace the screen only. So uh, I just want to show if you try to order, you can order the screen and this firm. In case when you peel off this firm, if you destroy that, you still have a, a new firm, brand new firm can be replaced. All right, let's start. All right, let me shut down the power and disconnect this power connector. And then let's prepare one screwdriver tool. Behind this HMI, take care, the screw is like this style. So we need to prepare the screwdriver. The head is like this style. It's a star style, like this. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna put this form underneath. All right, let's take it off. So after we open this cover, we will see this is a main motherboard. And there are two connectors. One is used for the touch screen. One is used for the physical button. So we will see the connector. So if you look at this two new, the new one for the touch screen, that is the yellow connector. Before we unplug the connectors, take care, we need to push this black connector, this black connector, push them out to unlock this connector. We push up like this way. Okay, look at the difference. If I push down, that is a lock. Lock the connector. Okay, make sure you push up the connector and then unplug this connector and cables. So make sure before you unplug these cables, you unlock the connector like this way and then push the cable out. And when we return it, you slide in and push down the connector that lock this cable. And then let's take off these five screws. There are two at the top and three at the bottom of this motherboard. And now we can take off this motherboard very carefully. Okay, so now that is the inside behind the screen. After we reach this step, we are able to assess these two connectors. And now we need to flip to the front. This is a little bit of tough process. We need to peel this firm off. You better have an air heater so that it's easy to peel off this firm. I will use a hair dryer to warm up this firm. And then let's use one flat tool to peel off one corner. And then we heat other place. So this process need back and forth a couple times. So we can see this is the inside. You can see this is the inside. 
So as we can see, to change the screen, we have to peel off entirely this firm. So there is no easier way to partially peel this off. We have to peel off this firm totally so that we can change the screen. All right, let's see the inside. So if you order this firm, this firm come with uh, this connector. So that actually come with some circuit as this layer. This layer go to this connector. This connector, this connector go to this blue connector. That is the same as this one. But in my case, my firm doesn't have the problem. We just need to change this glass, this is screen only. So once I peel off this firm till here, so I can kick this screen off and change this screen only. All right, as we can see, I didn't do this very well. It broke this glass, So, but this is a bad one, so it doesn't matter. But when you take this off, you need to very carefully. So this edge is so sticky. This glass screen was pasted on this edge. So you need to very carefully, especially the screen behind, that's the actual LCD screen behind. So you need to very carefully, don't broken the background screen, okay? And then, we will take this uh, off. Okay. Okay, I basically clean up this area and then now we are going to load this new screen at here. So for this new one, it has a firm. So we need to take off this firm. Keep in mind the firm side, that's the outside. So that is the front, okay, at the top. Let's guide this connector, guide this connector go through the hole at here. Go through this hole. Okay. And load this screen carefully. Okay, load the screen inside here and take care of this connector here and then make sure this side, this connector can be totally free, okay? And then we will peel the firm off. Uh, and then I will still use this firm so because this connector is still working properly uh, and this firm still works fine. After all, this screen is my home lab. So I change the screen only, still keep using this firm. If you change entirely, change the screen, take care. This screen come with a connector. So we need to clean this area totally and change this layer totally. That is not quite an easy job. So I will still keep using this firm, all right? Okay, we basically recover this firm it's not perfect, but I hope it can be used. Okay, let's quickly return the motherboard and let's do a quick test. Take care, for the motherboard, there are five screws here. There are two screws, the thread, they are pretty fine. And those two screws is especially useful, this two corner. That allows the motherboard mounted on this metal plate. Take care to remount the connector. Look at this connector here. So if you look at this angle, you push up this connector to unlock this connector. And then we can plug in this connector. And then push down to lock this connector. Okay, we will do the same thing for other connectors. All right, check everything and make sure the screws, they are tight and the connector, they are tight. And then we can return this cover, okay? All right, we resemble this HMI. And now let's connect the power and connect the ethernet cable.
conduct the power. After we replace this new touch screen, we better do a calibration to calibrate our touching position. We better recalibrate the touching function. So to enter the recalibrate function, reboot the HMI. And while it's rebooting, so we can jump to the control panel. And then we can go to the OP. And then go to touch. Here, that is a recalibration function. So we can click this uh, recalibrate function and make sure we click the center of that cross. Until here, we touch the screen. That is the confirmation. Okay, now we recalibrate this touch screen. Okay, now it's working properly. Okay. And after this, we can start the HMI. Okay, the HMI is still working. Now let's touch the screen. Okay, so as we can see, now the touch function is working now. All right, that is this uh, fixed process. So we change this glass screen, that's the touch function after we return. So this touching function is working now. So I can use this small HMI as my home lab touch screen. So I can put a button or indicators. All right, that is for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.